bore our school. He bore our sicknesses. And I'm going to ask you this. If he bore our sicknesses, can you bear something and not feel the weight of it? If you bear something, you're going to feel, feel the full weight of it. He bore our sicknesses and carried our sorrows. All of that is on him while he's hanging on a cross. Is that enough to change a person's appearance? Yes. Oh, yes it is. Yes. And for what one writer said that his skin was black. Now, this is where we go to the book of Revelation, where we see this picture of the risen Christ. The Bible says his, his feet were like polished what? Brass. brass. Is brass white? What color is brass? It's like a brown, goldish brown color. His eyes were like flames of fire and his feet were like polished brass. Now, I believe that was one of the scriptures that the commentator, that's one of the scriptures people use to say Jesus was black. That is not true. He was Jewish. So let's just get that one out. But anyway, that's one of the scriptures that some commentators use to say when he was on that cross, his complexion changed. He had suffered so much. And we see it in the risen Christ. Now it's not a burnt looking, but it's a polished brass. Because what does fiery do? Purifies and refines. That makes sense? Fire purifies and refines. So did he go through the fire in effect? Yes, yes he did. Blackish. It was blackish? Okay, so uh, mother said, now the uh, listeners to hear this. Mother said that when you saw it, that brass turns like a blackish color when it comes through the fire? She's asking. Oh, she's, oh you're asking that. Does it turn a blackish color? I would say it does. And we can look it up and find out. I would say it does. Because when you burn something, it goes through a chemical change. And nothing gets burned and turned lighter than it was. When it gets burned, it gets black. So I would say yes. And so we can, you know, do some YouTube videos and see some uh, brass going through fire and see what colors it turns. We can do that. But I guarantee it does turn black. Yeah. So he went through the fire. The lamb went through the fire. Typology of Christ, Passover. Here we go. You should eat it, okay, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand. Make haste, for this is the Lord's Passover. What was the significance of having a loins girded, your shoes on their feet, staff in the hand, you fully dressed? Get out fast. Because they had to get out fast. Now, this goes to this fact. When God delivers you, it won't... <laughs> Our deliverance don't, won't always come the way we want it to come. Okay? Say, for example, you're going from one job to another. You want everybody to be happy for you. But it may not happen like that. Your transition from one job to another may mean you're getting fired. And that may be your transition. The children of Israel's transition out of Egypt didn't come with Pharaoh shaking Moses' hand and say, good job, that was the best 430 years of y'all life. No. Amen. Pharaoh did not tell him that. Y'all were such good employees. If you ever need a reference because you're enslaved at another nation, just let me know. No. He didn't do that. Moses knew y'all better be dressed and ready because we're getting out of here. We're going to have to get out of here and we got to get out of here quick because when it's sinking on Pharaoh, what he just did, the man done changed his mind about two or three times before. So, when he get the, when his brain registers what he just did, we better be good and getting and out of here. So, they were fully dressed, ready to go, and it says, "It is the Lord's Passover." It is the Lord's Passover. So, mm -hmm. 
What did we just read have anything to do with Passover? Because we know the Passover was when what the death angel came yeah, mm -hmm. and passed over. So in the passages we just read, if we didn't know this was the Passover, how would we know? Hmm. But this is the Lord's Passover. This is what Moses said. A certain kind of food in a certain kind of ways. Okay. Now, from what we read, we know this in hindsight. Okay? from what we've read, because Moses hadn't said anything right here about the death angel coming. So what we read, we know in hindsight. How would they know? Well, number one, the story not over yet. So I would say that would be a premature question for me to ask. <laughs> so, <laughs> so number one, the story is not over yet. But the bottom line is this, what Moses is telling you, you better do it whether you understand it or not. Right. When God gives instruction, you better do it whether you understand it or not. That's the bottom line. That's right. That's right. Lord, I don't under well, I didn't ask you to understand. I asked you to do I told yes, you to do it. Yes, right. Just do it. Just do it. That's the key. Because if they had questioned him, which is what a lot of uh, folks do today, they'll question you, well, why this? Well, why that? Well, why the other thing? Why do I need to get out the street? Why is that truck coming so fast? Hmm? Um... By the time you finish asking adult children why you need to get out of the street and why is the truck going at 80 miles an hour when it should be going 55, you're dead. If they say move, just move. Just move. Does that make sense? If you see, because you see further than a five-year-old child can see. In God's view, we're less than five-year-old. And he's eternal. He's seen the beginning and the end. He is the beginning and the end. He knows what's going to happen. So God, I don't understand why you're telling me to do this. Just do it. You'll understand it better by and by. Yes, ma'am. And I think just like road signs. Yes. Says those are signs that we ought to. Not just go past because you on the side of the road. Right. Those are signs that the government make for us to go by. Yes. You have to go by. If you break, you don't go by, you break the law. Yeah. That's the same thing. And I mean, and not only can, uh, do you break the law by ignoring the sign. Right. You could be breaking your life. Right. By ignoring the sign. Or somebody else's. Yeah, or somebody else's by ignoring the sign. Mm -hmm. Do what you're told to do. So, God tells, he tells Moses this, and then he said, it, and then Moses said, for it is the Lord's Passover. At this point, I don't know if they understood exactly the significance of this, but all they knew was that they had an instruction they were supposed to follow. And then he goes and explains, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, in other words, it's going to happen tonight. All, and will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both male and beast, and against the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now, this is the reason why. We're not holding no conference. I'm telling you, this is the Lord's Passover. They didn't, they, this was no see it, what, Q&A session. He says, God says, I'm going to pass through the land of Egypt, and that the first one of every Egyptian is going to die, both male and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. How is he executing judgment against the gods of Egypt? He's showing them up as frauds. And the blood shall be to you a token upon the houses where you are. And when, you, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. So you didn't understand why you was collecting the blood at first, but now I'm going to tell you, it's a token. Why, at, why, Moses, do you want us to put all this blood all over our dope horse? Now I'm going to tell you, because when I see it, I'm going to pass over it. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Once again, God is making a difference. The plague is not going to be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now, check this out. The plague is not, this plague is not for you because you're going to be obedient and do what I say. 
If the children of Israel did not apply that blood, they would have died. Because the blood was the token. So if they didn't have the blood, they would not have had the what? Token. And the death angel was going to visit the houses of those that did not have the blood. So if they was disobedient and did not have the blood, what you think would happen? Firstborn of that house would have died. That's what would have happened. That's why it's important to follow instructions. It's going to be a token. It's a token. Oh, moment. You can be saved any kind of way. As long as you say you believe, you say it. It doesn't matter about the blood of Jesus. You just say it because you say you say it. Is that God's way? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You can be saved and be just as disobedient right. as the day is long, and you still saved. Mm. Oh, really? You can be saved no matter what you believe. Oh, really? I don't need Jesus. Oh, really? I don't need the blood. Oh, really? Now, the blood is that token. When I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. If I don't see the blood, I'm stopping by your house. <laughs> so you still think you can do it your way? My God. Oh, really? He said, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. In other words, it's not my desire to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, when judgment comes, it's not my desire to destroy you. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord throughout your generations, and ye shall keep it a feast by ordinance forever. Now, Passover. Cheddar, the significance of Passover is this. In the church, for many years, the church celebrated Passover a long time ago. They did not, during the time of the apostles, they celebrated Passover. They did not celebrate Easter. Ooh. They celebrated Passover. Uh huh. Paul celebrated Passover. Mm -hmm. He did not celebrate Easter. God told them to keep Passover forever. Well, Sister Scott, Jesus came, Jesus died, he's our Passover, so we don't have to celebrate Passover. I respectfully disagree with that. <laughs> and the reason why I respectfully disagree with this is because as we read, we're going to see in the Word of God how, and hopefully it's going to be next week, it wasn't just Jews that came out of Egypt. There was a mixed multitude. And that entire mixed multitude, if they wanted to live, had to apply the blood. Because there were some others that weren't Jews that believed. And I, hopefully we'll read that next week. There was a mixed multitude. Everything wasn't Hebrew that came out of Egypt. Because the only slaves in Egypt were not Hebrews. They had many nations that were slaves yes, yes. in Egypt. And God said, and Moses reiterated it, all of us, even the stranger in your ooh, gate, <clears throat> my God, my we're God. supposed to keep it. Now, I need a bold soul to do this. Research this week when the church started celebrating Easter. Because Easter was actually a Babylonian yeah. celebration. Yeah. Yep, say it again. She said it, so y'all know I'm not lying. Right. Please say it again. It's for, it's for the God Ishtar. We're not supposed to celebrate Easter. That's right. Wow. It's a pagan holiday. It's a pagan holiday. Yes, ma'am. So now I got a witness. She knows. Okay? Now, there's, I think there's two places in the Bible where the word Easter is mentioned. And one, I believe, was when Paul was on this ship and he was about to be shipwrecked, and then he mentioned the word Easter. But he wasn't talking about it as in, you need to celebrate. Because remember, it was a Babylonian holiday. And the other mention of the word Easter 
is in one of the epistles. And this particular mention of the word Easter was actually the word uh, Passover, but the King James scholars translated it as Easter. So something got lost in translation. That's it. That's where the bunnies and eggs came from. Come here. I want you to say this. Please come say this. So y'all know I am not lying. I am not lying. Yes, ma'am. I'm giving you the floor. Please say it. Just like you did. Be bold. Be brave. The Lord that God is with you. Come on. Say it. Please. Yes, ma'am. Um, Easter is a play on the goddess Ishtar. And um, it's, she is the goddess of fertility and sex. The Babylonian deity that is a pagan god is not a Christianity at, at all. And um, we're not supposed to be celebrating Easter at all. It's a pagan holiday. Just like Christians are not supposed to do yoga. Right. When you do yoga, the, the positions that you do in yoga is a Hindu deity. You're it worshiping is. a Hindu no, deity. So there's no such thing as Christian yoga or anything. You got a lot of new age stuff that's trying to come into the church. So we just have to be aware. You're so right. Yes. Oh Can y'all say thank you, Lord? Thank, thank you, Lord. Yes. I'm not lying to you guys. She's telling the truth. She is telling the truth. That's where you get bunnies and eggs. Bunnies don't lay eggs, okay? I remember Bishop Anderson used to say that. Bunnies don't lay eggs. But that's where you get bunnies and eggs and buy new clothes and hot cross buns and all that. That's where that stuff comes from. And if I'm not mistaken, I think America didn't start celebrating Easter until the 1800s. Hello. I think it was either 1871 or 1851. In America, Easter wasn't celebrated until the 19th century. Seriously. Okay, so, oh, thank you, Lord. I am, Lord, I thank you for Sister Kiwana. God, I thank you for Sister thank Kiwana. You. God, I thank you for Sister Kiwana. Thank you, Lord. You guys, thank you, Lord. research things. Find out where it came from. Okay? Please. Yeah. Passover is supposed to be celebrated from generation to generation. Now, one thing I will say, I'm seeing that a lot of churches now are beginning to warm, Christian churches are beginning to warm up to the idea of Passover. Because Christian churches are now beginning to take on some Jewish traditions. And there are some that's beginning to warm up the Passover because they're realizing and they're learning that, wow, that's not biblical. They're learning that. And I believe this is not the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This is according to um, J. Scott 315, okay? <laughs> I believe that the time is going to come where you're going to have Christians and Jews are going to come together mm -hmm. in harmony and unity. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be because the Jews forsook everything they believe. They don't have to forsake everything they believe. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be become the Christians forsook everything they believe. But it's going to be, be because we're going to forsake a lot of the idolatrous traditions that was brought into Christianity during the reign of Constantine. Mm -hmm. And when we start forsaking some of those idolatrous traditions that was brought into the church ooh, in order to get people to want to join the church, wow. right. then... We're going to start being refined, and then we're going to start coming together, and then we're going to come into the unity of the faith. Mm -hmm. And there's no longer going to be Jew and Gentile, Greek or Scythian or male or female, but then we can be one. Because it's those extra things that separate us. It's not the word. It's those extra little things that we take on. That's what's causing us. Yes, ma'am, separation. Yes, ma'am. And one more thing. Um, I've been following the um, Jewish calendar for the past couple years. Trying to get on God's time, yeah. Because you know we follow the Gregorian calendar. Just what you so, were saying. Um, Girl, you good. <laughs> and so September 29th was the Sunday that Prophetess Black was here. It was actually the first day of the New Year in oh. the Jewish calendar, which was Rosh Hashanah. So how fitting oh. that God had a prophet yeah. set us in order on the first yeah. day of the New Year in God's New Year. So wow. actually, using <laughs> Rosh Hashanah, using the Jewish New Year started September 29th. How many weeks are we from Rosh Hashanah? Today is the 20th, and now, ooh, cut some Oh, four weeks. Mm, we're wow. four weeks from Rosh wow. How many days from Passover did they kill the lamb? Four. Oh, wow. Ooh. Wow. Ooh, good. Ooh, Lord. Oh, my God. Did y'all get that? Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Wow. One more question. What year is it on the Jewish calendar? Can you pull that up? Which one? What year is it on the Jewish it's calendar? 5780. 5780 yeah. on the Jewish wow. calendar. Wow. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Ooh, that was good. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you guys learned something. I did. Yes. I really did. That is just awesome. Wow. Four weeks into the Jewish New Year. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Got it. Yeah. Okay.